Hello and happy holidays. I'm Jackie Komnick, the event chair for Bakersville and the playwright of Miracle on Chestnut Street. I would like to thank you for joining us for this very special radio production. This story was written with the help of people like you, sharing memories and experiences from the Kiwani of years past. Talented children and adults from our community came together to bring this story to life. I'm extremely thankful for all of those who volunteered their time and talent to spread holiday cheer. Please sit back, relax, and grab a cup of hot cocoa. We hope you enjoy Miracle on Chestnut Street. Hey, Dad, the neighbor's already putting up Christmas lights. It's the first week of November. Doesn't she realize the majority of the neighborhood pumpkins haven't even begun to rot? I bet the early snowfall has her in the Christmas spirit. The only thing worse than her incessant desire to cause a brownout would be snow in early November. You know how Marley is, Kendra. She will have more lights on the front porch than the rest of the town will have on their trees. She always said she wanted to give Clark W. Griswold a run for his money. Looks like this will be her year. I am actually glad she's starting a bit earlier than in years past. She and I were talking a few weeks back about how she is always wanting to add the final touches on Christmas Eve. An early start means that she will have more time to enjoy her display. So are we going to put up a tree this year? Maybe some outdoor decorations? Your mom always loved to try to outdo. I just do not understand the point. It's such a waste of time. And do not even get me started on the financial aspect. She has to see a dramatic increase in her electric bill. There are different levels of irresponsibility. Frankly, I can think of worse things Miss Schmidt could be doing in her spare time. There's not much to celebrate this year anyway. It seems like it has been one thing after another, doesn't it? <sighs> I'm gonna head to bed. I have a big day tomorrow and I am not looking forward to that 5 a.m. alarm. 5 a.m.? Tomorrow is Saturday. You don't have the day off? Overtime, Dad. Okay. Then sleep well. Kendra? Yeah, Dad. I love you. Oh, Dad, you old softy. You know, I think you're pretty marvelous for an old guy. As I climbed the old rickety stairs to my second story bedroom, I stopped at the window to watch Mrs. Schmidt fussing over the lights and adjusting every branch on the artificial tree she had set up on her front porch. She put so much care into making sure her display was perfect. She needed to give up for the night and head to bed. I could not imagine putting so much effort into something that she wouldn't even see once she was inside her warm home. As I watched in disbelief, I found myself reminiscing about Christmas as a child cuddling with mom as we watched our old, worn Betamax copy of Miracle on 34th Street for what seemed like the millionth time. As I would drift off to sleep, I remember paying less attention to mom's favorite movie and instead marveling at the joy that seemed to dance from each one of the Christmas lights on our splendid tree. I was pulled back to reality by the sound of my dad letting Scout, his Labrador retriever, out one last time before bed. I was not overly keen with moving back into my parents' place, but I knew Dad couldn't cut it on his own. The man had a heart of gold, he was respected by his students and peers, and he did his part to ensure every student that stepped into his classroom at Blackhawk East left with the knowledge and self-confidence they needed to succeed. That being said, Mom took care of him for the last 33 years. A month's worth of phone calls about how to separate the laundry, asking where different things were kept around the house, and stories of scorched meals was all of the incentive I needed. After all, I couldn't let him live off of takeout and SpaghettiOs. So, here I am, trying to do my part to fill the void left in Mom's absence. I know you said you were going to bed, but I wanted to be sure you had something to eat. 
I ordered pizza from Happy Joe's for dinner. It's your favorite. Supreme with extra mushrooms. I warmed up a few slices for you, and look, I managed not to burn them. Okay, thanks. You can set it on my desk. Kendra, I know your heart is heavy, but there's nothing wrong with trying to find happiness in the holiday season, especially this year. Do you remember what your mother would always say about the best way to spread Christmas cheer? Oh, Dad, look at the snow coming down. If it is this bad November, I cannot even imagine what we are going to deal with come January. Uh, I'm going to have to get up earlier than I thought so I can shovel the drive. I better get to sleep. I will just leave this on the desk then. I'm going to head to bed as well. Sleep tight. I took off my old steel-toed boots and rubbed my calloused feet. I knew I should jump in the shower, but I could barely keep my eyes open. Before I could give the pizza a second thought, I had fallen asleep in my bedside chair. What in the name of Sam Hill was that? I made my way over to the window, tore open the shutter, and threw up the sash. The old man was right. That old oak tree didn't have dinner to make it through another winter. I could see the branch that we hung my old tire swing from had given in to the weight of the snow. From this angle, it looked like it just missed the garage. But I pulled on my Jordans and a sweatshirt and headed out to the backyard to get a closer look. The moment I opened the door, the crisp night air whipped around me. I was too caught up in the way the newly fallen snow glistened in the moonlight to give a second thought to the fact that I should have gone with snow boots and a heavy coat. Though it was bitter cold, the yard looked quite magical. The full moon illuminated every tree branch covered in the glittery white powder. The icicles perfectly framed the roof of the garage. I almost felt guilty as I trudged through the snow, disturbing the picturesque landscape. I was so caught up in my thoughts that I did not see the icy patch at the edge of the driveway. I was flat on my back before I even realized what had happened. As I stared at the night sky, contemplating my choices, I noticed a shadowy figure shuffling over from the neighbor's house. Kendra Winter, how many times do I need to tell you that Jordans and a sweatshirt are not acceptable winter attire? Mrs. Schmidt? Is that you? Mrs. Schmidt, the sound of the branch falling woke me up and I wanted to make sure it did not hit the garage. I should have paid more attention because I slipped on the ice and hit the ground so hard, I feel like the wind was knocked out of me. Take a few deep breaths and calm down. I don't need you getting up too fast. Before you jump to your feet, let's just try sitting up. How's that? Ugh. Mrs. Schmidt, I'm so thankful you were awake. I think I'm going to be just fine. Wait, why are you still up? It has to be close to 1 a.m. Oh, I was just finishing hanging up the garland around the kitchen ceiling when the sound of the branch hitting the ground nearly scared the living daylights out of me. I almost fell off my ladder. You would have thought I saw a ghost. I decided to head out and check to see if there was any damage done. I bet I would have beat you out here, but I decided to put on some boots and a coat first. Okay, let's try standing. Ah, uh, there you go, that's better. Now that you're back on your feet, why don't you come inside and have some hot chocolate before you head to bed? I think you better stay awake a bit. I'm not sure how hard you hit that noggin no, of yours. No, I'm good. I want to get a few more hours of sleep before I have to head to work. I've been working doubles. We can't pump out the semi-trailers fast enough. Now, Kendra Marie Winter, do not make me wake your father. You and I both know he will have 911 on the line before I even finish explaining to him what happened. I think that sitting a spell and enjoying some cocoa is a much better alternative than an early morning trip to the emergency room. Okay, Mrs. Schmidt. I'll have a cup of cocoa with you, but I'm not staying long. I knew you would listen to reason. Kendra, hun, it has been over 25 years since you were in my class. You need to stop calling me Mrs. Schmidt. Please, call me Marley. 
Mrs. Schmidt, I, I mean Marley, has been our neighbor for as long as I can remember. Though I have sat with her countless times on her front porch swing, sipping lemonade and talking about our days, this is the first time I have been inside her home. She guided me over to the sofa in her den and helped me sit down. I would never admit it to her, but I am glad she invited me over. I was feeling rather sore and a bit woozy after the fall. Goodness, it is hard to believe that my very first class is already in their early 30s. How about some water, dear? I think some painkiller might be necessary as well. As luck would have it, I ran into Osco earlier today to pick up some Tylenol. Did you hear that some fancy new drugstore is going to take over Osco? I want to say it's called SUV, CVS, something like that. Though I have to admit, if I were to have my way, I would still be visiting Swedman Pharmacy. Those were the good old days. Here you go, dear. Kendra, do you want marshmallows or whipped cream in your cocoa? Hmm? Whatever you think is best. How about both? I might even have a peppermint stick you can use as a stirrer. As the decadent smell of rich hot chocolate emanated from the kitchen, I became aware that Marley's love for Christmas did not stop at her front door. The immaculately placed holiday decor continued through her foyer, down the hall, into the den, and from the looks of it, continued through every square inch of the house. Each room has its own perfect theme. Jolly snowmen filled the foyer, welcoming guests in a joyous manner. The hallway was decked with vintage Christmas decorations. The sharp colors and sinister-looking Santas were a stark and eerie contrast to the happiness one was greeted with when entering her home. The den was filled with miniature glass figurines. The bright blue and dark purple accents cast a light upon the figurines that made them look as if they were carved out of ice rather than glass. I shook my head in amazement. What an incredible waste of time and money. Here you go, dear. I hope you enjoy it. I could have used the powder, but I figured I should go with my grandma's recipe. It might take a bit longer to make, but trust me, it is worth the wait. As I raised the mug to my face, the steam from the warm drink caused my glasses to fog up. With the very first sip, the bittersweet liquid warmed me from the inside. I gladly accepted a blanket from Marley. I was so cozy, so comfortable, so tired. My eyes grew heavy as I succumbed to exhaustion. As the clock struck 2 a.m., I drifted off to sleep on Marley's sofa. <sighs> oh, crap. Mrs. Schmidt? I must have fallen asleep on the sofa. I have to go. I'm late for work. Thanks for everything. I shot out of Mr. Schmidt's front door in such a hurry that I didn't notice the absence of the glass figurines, vintage Santas, or jolly snowmen. Nor did I realize the beautiful snowfall had disappeared and was replaced by a blanket of colorful autumn leaves. I was so focused on getting changed for work that I started pulling my sweatshirt off while running up the stairs of my parents' front porch. If I had paid more attention, I would have seen my old Barbie big wheel sitting next to the front door. In fact, I was so consumed with my thoughts that I did not even think to shout a good morning to my dad as I dashed up the rickety old stairs and flung open the door to my room. <gasps> it was like I had entered the twilight zone. My futon and bedside chair had been replaced by a canopy bed with a strawberry shortcake comforter and a white rocking chair. I turned slowly and tried to wrap my mind around what was going on, the only thing that was in the proper place was a photo of my family next to the fireplace on Christmas morning. I could not help but notice the frame was missing the signs of wear and tear that come with time, despite the fact the photo was taken in 1979. My old college textbooks were replaced by golden books. Matchbox cars and Barbies covered the floor. Instead of my work clothes being tossed in my hamper, there was children's clothing haphazardly thrown everywhere. My trusty steel-toed boots were replaced by a pile of keds and jelly shoes. I froze when I heard the familiar creak of the staircase. As they climbed the stairs, their voices became audible. 
It was my father and a young child. I felt the need to hide. Just in the nick of time, I stepped into my closet and cracked the door. I know you are excited, Kendra, but your mother has a big afternoon plan for us. It's most important that we get everything done around the house before she gets back. Oh good, I see you already made your bed. Now you just need to pick up your toys and take care of all those clothes. Once your room is done, we can head on up to the attic. Okay, Daddy, I'm so excited. I'm going to work really hard. Then we can put up the Christmas tree and the Christmas lights and hang our stockings and drink hot chocolate and watch Christmas movies and write a letter to Santa. I'm going to ask for a Care Bear, Teddy Rucks pin, a light bulb, <laughs> a Cabbage Patch Kid. You're getting a little ahead of yourself. Let's focus on cleaning your room first. You take care of your chores while I run to the basement to start another load of laundry. I watched from the closet as my six-year-old self set to work. Her excitement was tangible as she danced around the room, picking up toys and making sure everything was practically perfect. For a fleeting moment, I was concerned that my younger self was going to open the closet door to put away her laundry. But I relaxed when I remembered that my preferred method of putting clothing away was to shove everything under my bed. Okay, Daddy, it's done. Can we start bringing the Christmas decorations down from the attic? This looks great, Kendra. Let's see. It's about 9.30. Mom said she would be home before 11, which you and I both know she'll get to talking while running errands downtown, especially at Swedman's. I bet we will not see her till closer to noon. We have more than enough time to bring everything down from the attic and eat lunch before she gets home. I bet we'll even be able to start decorating right when she walks in the door. Oh, Daddy, this is the best day ever. I hope we get to watch the movie about the Santa that can speak Dutch to the little girl. I love that movie so much. That is your mother's favorite, too. Mom, I have no clue what in the blazes was going on, but there was one thing I was certain of. My mother was downtown running errands. I was desperate to catch a glimpse of her, even if it was from afar. I waited for what seemed like a couple of decades, but I knew I was in the clear to leave when I heard my father followed by tiny footsteps as he ascended the stairs to the attic. Each step I took brought me closer to the realization of how odd this situation was. Somehow, inexplicably, I have been whisked back to my childhood. Though I was in a hurry to get downtown, the haste in my step diminished as I began to take in all of the changes to our neighborhood. Prospect Street had such a strange, yet familiar feeling. Trees that now tower over our home were half the size in 1980. Every house that I walked past had slight changes. Some are painted with a different color scheme, others are missing the new additions I have become accustomed to seeing, and you can tell our current neighbors have much more time to dedicate to landscaping than they did when children ran our neighborhood. I'm gonna tell your mom, Mikey, she is gonna be so mad at you. Jenny, no, please, I promise I won't do it again. I was taken aback as Jennifer ran past me. Right on her heels was Michael. They could not have been more than 10 years old. Hard to believe they are married now with their third child on the way. As I continued downtown, I reminisced about how much has changed over the last 26 years. One thing that has stayed the same is the fact that I still felt comfortable and secure as I walked in my old neighborhood. I was so caught up in my thoughts that I was surprised that I was already outside of Central School. Standing outside of my old neighborhood school, I felt like a child again. I could hear the squeals of delight during recess. I remember chasing friends around the playground during tag. The feeling of victory when we prevented someone from breaking through during Red Rover. And the sound the kickball made when a solid kick sent the ball soaring across the playground during one of our kickball battles. As I crossed the street, I could not help but smile when I thought about how cool I felt because I knew some of the 8th graders. My favorite being Susan, my old babysitter. Susan was a member of the safety patrol. When I was in first grade, Susan would reach down and hold my hand as she helped me cross the street.
There were so many wonderful teachers, though my most cherished memories were made in Mrs. Spear and Mr. Parrish's classrooms. I will never forget the classroom parties we had with Mrs. Spear. I hope she knows how much she meant to me. I picked up my pace a bit, and before I knew it, I was fast approaching the intersection of Burr and First Street. As I came around the corner, I was greeted by the aroma of butter and the bright yellow lights on Tom's popcorn stand. Well, isn't this a blast from the past? The yellow lights of Tom's popcorn stand served as a beacon for all of those in need of a delicious snack. My mother was never one for sweets, though she had a weakness and that was Tom's popcorn. Mom used to tell me stories of how her and dad used to cruise the four lanes back in the day. Dad would always joke about how he used the popcorn to butter her up. Like he ever had to worry about winning her over. Dad had her heart from day one. I realized how hungry I was, so I took my place in line. Well, here you go, John. I hope you and your papa have fun watching your dad play ball. Thanks so much, Teague. Tug Tommy said hello. You're welcome, John. I will be sure to send your well wishes Tom's way. Hey, nice talking with you, Teague. Let's go, John. We don't want to miss the first inning. The lady in front of me placed her order as I watched John clutch his bag of popcorn and climb into the front seat of his papa's white Chevy Impala. Welcome to Tom's Popcorn, ma'am. What can I get for you? Teague, I'm going to need quite a bit more popcorn than we usually get. It seems as if Linnea promised her teacher that she would be bringing popcorn balls into school for her entire class. Thankfully, the neighbor lady has the magic touch when it comes to popcorn balls because I've never made them. Oh, little Linnea, I know she created quite a lot of work for you, but her class is going to appreciate it. She's lucky to have such a patient mother. As their conversation continued, my focus switched to the inside of Tom's stand. I loved watching them toss the popcorn as the cylinder rotated, picking up the butter on the bottom and bringing it to the top, creating what seemed like a butter waterfall. Oh, oh, oh boy, Chris. Chris Winter, is that you? It's been quite some time, but I recognize that smile anywhere. Chris? Chris Winter? He knew my mother. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm not from around here. You must have me confused with someone else. I'm Kendra. I realized I could not give him my real last name. Kendra Kringle. Kendra Kringle? Oh, how cliche. What is this? Some sort of Hallmark movie? <laughs> well, Miss Kringle, I'm Mr. Frost. Teague Frost at your service. I'm running the show around here while Tom and his family are on vacation. Can I interest you in some delicious popcorn? Yes, please. I'll take one. With extra butter. Not from around here, eh? Well, consider me your official welcoming committee. You sure picked a marvelous day to visit our city. The downtown is all abuzz as everyone's excited about the holiday tree going up. The city workers are on the corner of 2nd and Tremont putting the lights on the great big evergreen right now. Well, you need to be sure to stop and take a look. We are the only town in the area that can boast about our Christmas tree right in the middle of a major downtown intersection. Thanks. I will have to check it out. Oh, here you go, dear. This one's on the house. So, what brings you to town, anyway? I am here to... to see my mother. Well, I hope you and your mother have a wonderful day. And Kendra, have a holly jolly Christmas. Mr. Frost, Teague, seemed like a kind gentleman. I am thankful our paths crossed. It was hard not to feel happy after talking with him. I enjoyed my popcorn as I walked down Main Street. If mom was anything, she was predictable. When running errands, she usually stopped into Spurgeon's. If a deposit needed to be made, she would swing by Union Federal. And if time allowed, she would pop into Swedman's Pharmacy. I found it difficult to stay on task as I made my way to the first stop. I marveled at the beautifully decorated store windows and I caught myself people watching searching the crowd for those I knew as a child. Once through the double doors at Spurgeon's, I had to fight the urge to go immediately downstairs. Instead, I walked through the women's apparel and decided to check out the men's department for good measure, just in case Mom had decided to do a little Christmas shopping for Dad. 
After I finished checking the main floor, I headed down to the basement. As I descended the stairs, the candy counter came into full view. The clear glass bins lined the shelves of the glass cabinet. Though it seemed much smaller than it did when I was a child, the vibrant colors and the sweet smell that filled the air was just as I remembered it. Orange slices, lemon heads, sour cherry balls, jelly beans, hard candies, root beer barrels, chocolate stars, turtles, malt and milk balls, and so much more. A young girl pulled her mother to the candy counter in hopes for a sweet treat. Mommy, please. I've been so good. I really want some licorice and jawbreakers. Now, remember what I said, Mandy. If you are well behaved for Cheryl during your haircut, then we will stop by the candy counter on the way out. Hello, dear. Is there anything I can get for you? I'm having a hard time deciding. I think I'll need just a moment. The root beer barrels are a big seller. So are the chocolate stars. Between you and me, the orange slices are my personal favorite. Occasionally, I sneak one when no one's looking. Give me a holler whenever you are ready. She moved on to the next customer. I watched as the young man picked each candy. His obvious excitement had him bouncing around as if it were Christmas Day. Do you know if Chris Winter has been in yet this morning? Last week, she was inquiring about a new addition to her Christmas village, and it came in on Friday. I tried to maintain focus on the candy counter, as I did not want to draw attention to the fact that I was eavesdropping. You just missed her. She was in and out much quicker than normal today. In fact, she had only stayed here long enough to purchase a bag of those little mints for Kendra, and then she had to get on to her next stop. She did mention how excited she was to get home so she could start decorating for the holidays. Have you decided, hon? I'll just take half pound of the petite smooth and minty meltaways. Please and thank you. I watched as she dipped the scoop into the container of my favorite minty candy and poured the contents into the white bag she had sitting on the scale. Here you go, dear. You can pay off to your right. Have a marvelous weekend. It was difficult to maintain a semblance of self-control as I walked out of Spurgeon's. As soon as I opened the door, I turned left so quickly that I collided with an elderly gentleman, knocking him right on his dupa. His carefully wrapped packages tumbled to the ground. I fumbled over my words as I tried to get out an apology. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Let me help you up. I apologize for not paying attention. I hope you're okay. As I extended my hand to help him to his feet, I stifled a gasp as we made eye contact. The tall, lanky gentleman has small, beady eyes and a long, white beard. He had the same sinister look about him as the Santas Mrs. Schmidt used to decorate her hallway. His burgundy suit dated back to the 70s, and the plaid shirt and gold chain he wore under the slightly unbuttoned shirt made me feel uneasy. I quickly helped him up and then withdrew my hand. Together, we silently picked up his packages. I wished him a good day and went about my way when he called after me. Excuse me, ma'am, do you happen to know how to get to Berg and Dines? Berg and Dines. The name sounds familiar, though I'm not sure where it is. There's quite a large crowd watching the city workers pour up the last of the lights on the community Christmas tree. I'm sure we can find someone who can point you in the right direction. As we walked down the street, I filled him in about our town's Christmas tree tradition, and he talked about how he is in town to visit his grandchildren. Though it has been quite some time since he visited, he remembered that Berg and Dines sold candy by the box. He wanted to pick up a couple boxes so he could surprise his daughter. He mentioned Trinidad's were her absolute favorite. We paused for a moment on the corner of 2nd and Tremont, as we watched them finish adding the last of the large, brightly colored strings of lights to the town Christmas tree. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you happen to know where Bergen Dines is? Oh, well, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Bergen Dines is now Swedman's Pharmacy. Just head on down to the corner of Chestnut. It's the south side of the street. You cannot miss it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you are very welcome. Have a fantastic day. Okay, looks like we're walking together, as that is where I'm heading as well. 
As we continued along the way, the elderly gentleman spoke about his family with such love. He actually reminded me of my father. I felt guilty for initially judging him based on his looks. My mother raised me better than that. Here we are, Swedman's Pharmacy. Thank you, young lady. Here, let me get the door for you. He held the door open for me and we both walked in to what will hopefully be my last stop. I recognized her laugh the moment I walked through the door. Dad is right, mom always had to stop and talk to everyone. It is a good thing too, or I might have missed her. I ducked into the next aisle over and choked back tears as I hung on every word she said. Chris, it's still a few days before Thanksgiving. What are you thinking putting up that tree of yours? You should take the time to celebrate each and every holiday. Life is too short to rush through it. <laughs> oh, you can give me a hard time, but I am not changing my mind. Life is too short to hold off on doing something that makes me happy because you think we should wait a few more days. You win this time, so tell me, Chris, will your light display be the brightest on the block this year? Mom spoke with such love and enthusiasm, explaining to anyone who would listen that one of her favorite parts about being a mom was working together to transform the house into a winter wonderland. <laughs> I let out a small giggle. Winter wonderland? Mom loved that play on words. And after the last decoration is placed, Trent, Kendra, and I will cuddle up on the sofa and we will fall asleep watching Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, goodness, look at the time. I really must be on my way. I will see you all next week. I watched as she walked out the door. The rest of the room was undoubtedly cheerier than they were when she arrived. As I made my way out of the store, I was stopped by a beautiful woman dressed in blues and purples. She looked flawless, like she was made out of porcelain. Hello, my dear. Can I interest you in any of our fragrances? Perhaps there's someone on your Christmas list that would be interested in a bottle of Stetson, exclamation, or electric youth. Maybe next time. I really have to get home. I understand. You don't want to keep your family waiting. You need to cherish every moment you have together. Though I was so close to her, I never felt further away. I wanted to give her a hug, to tell her how much I love her, to explain that I would give anything to watch Miracle on 34th Street one more time, or to help her decorate the tree, or even to hang up just enough decorations to outdo old Mrs. Schmidt. I took a moment to compose myself. Though my heart ached to spend more time with my mother, I knew that I needed to get home. Home to dad. I had to let him know that I was ready to decorate, that we could play Miracle on 34th Street in the background while we put up the tree, that we could do it not only for mom, but also for us. I ran as fast as I could, but as I approached Prospect Street, I realized I could not just walk into my childhood home. My father will not even recognize me. I will be a complete stranger. I made my way to McKinley Park, the horse swings. I have not seen them in ages. Sad, desperate, and confused. I can only imagine how ridiculous I look. A grown woman sitting on a horse swing, eating her candy, swaying back and forth as the sound of metal scraping echoed through the park. It is funny how the sound of these swings was just as much a part of my childhood as Tom's, Spurgeon's, and Swedman's. Oh no. Did I wake you, Kendra? I was trying to keep it down, but I tell you what, I just have a heck of a time assembling the light display for the back deck. I have never been good with power tools. Marley, what time is it? Don't you worry your little head, Kendra. I already talked to your dad. He let your boss know that you needed to get a bit of rest today after your nasty spell last night. Your decorations, the jolly snowmen, the vintage Santas, and the glass figurines. Marley, your decorations are beautiful. Oh, Kendra, you are too much. Thank you for talking to my dad this morning. I'm so thankful to have the day off today. I need to get home. I'm going to see if Dad would like to put the Christmas decorations. Maybe if we work straight through until dinner, we can even get our porch decked out too. Your goal might be to outdo Clark Griswold, but I have my sights on a much larger goal. 
I think this is our year to outdo you, Marley. Oh, honey, your mom would be so happy to know that you have your spark back. It's a little after nine. I bet your dad will be heading to visit her soon. I know that it's been hard on you since the accident, but you cannot give up hope. The doctor said she could come out of this coma any day now. Instead of dwelling on how long it has been, maybe your focus should be on how any day could be the day we get your mama back. I don't know what came over me, but I walked right up to Marley and gave her the biggest hug. Thank you. Thanks for everything. For being there for me last night, for always being around when I need you most. I'm extremely lucky to have you in my life. Oh girl, don't make my nose feel funny. I'll always be here for you. I'm gonna go see if dad has already left. Much to my dismay, dad's old Mustang was already gone. I ran inside to grab my keys. Maybe if I hurry, I could meet him at the hospital. Dr. Lopez to surgery. Dr. Lopez to surgery. Dr. Svensson to OB. Dr. Svensson to OB. Hi, Kendra. It's nice to see you this morning. I just checked in on your mother. Her vitals are good. Unfortunately, we have not seen any change since your father's last visit. Thanks for the update. I fully anticipated seeing Dad sitting at Mom's bedside, holding her hand as he told her about his night. When I opened the door, I realized that I arrived before he did. I slowly approached Mom's bed. It was difficult to see her like this. I am not sure how Dad did it, day after day. I know I should visit more, but I could not bring myself to do so. I sat down next to the hospital bed. I explained how difficult life was without her, how I have been so depressed, that I have shut out everyone, including Dad. I took her hand and I told Mom all about my dream, how those who were a part of my dream helped me remember the importance of hope, love, family, and the magic of the holiday season. It's okay, Mom. You don't have to worry about me. I need you to focus on your recovery. All of the sadness comes to an end today. And you know what? As soon as Dad and I head home, we're going to put up the Christmas tree and every strand of outdoor lights that we own. We're going to leave them up until you're able to come home and enjoy them. I'm not giving up on the magic of the holiday season. And I'm not giving up on you. <clears throat> Kendra, I'm surprised to see you here. How are you feeling? Great, Dad. Better than I have felt in a long time. Did you mean what you said about the decorations? Yes, Dad. I want to get this started right away. As I stood to walk away and release Mom's hand, I felt a gentle squeeze. For the second time today, I had to fight back tears as I saw my mother's beautiful smile. Good morning, sleepyhead. I remember you jumping on my bed on Christmas morning. It looks like the roles have reversed. I have not so quietly walked past your room about 10 times in hopes that you would wake up on your own. I cannot stand the excitement anymore. Are you ready to open up gifts? Of course, Mom. Why don't you give me a moment to go change my Christmas sweater and I'll be downstairs before you know it. As I walked down the stairs, I noticed Mrs. Schmidt standing in her front yard enjoying her decorations. She waved when she noticed me watching her. I could be wrong, but... I think she added a few more lights after we left her house last night following our Christmas Eve celebration. That woman. If we are going to outdo her next year, we are really going to have to step up our game. I know Mom has quite a bit of time before she is completely healed. And honestly, I'm not sure if she will ever walk without that cane. None of that matters, though, because as I watched my mother open her first Christmas gift, the same joy that shimmered from every one of the Christmas lights on our splendid tree danced within my soul.